Hey, this is Pete from Strymon. I'm here with the new Volante Magnetic Echo Machine. We're going to go through uh, some of the uh, features and functions and uh, talk a little bit about uh, what's behind it all. A lot of people's reaction when they see Volante is uh, they think El Cap on steroids, and that's, uh, that's not a bad way to introduce it, actually. We wanted to take that concept and really expand on the range of delay voices and rhythmic possibilities. We took a look at a lot of the magnetic echo devices from the past and kind of try to assemble a, uh, an interface that would incorporate you know, a very wide range of the uh, possibilities that those machines presented. So at uh, Volante Center are these eight buttons which allow for individual playback and feedback assignment for each of the four heads. The uh, easiest way to hear them is we just select them all. And we have a time knob which adjusts the overall uh, delay time. So we can select any combination. And the way we have it configured, head four is essentially the quarter note head. So if you were to tap a tempo in with our tap tempo here, we see that the, the delay time is set by the uh, tap and the other heads are divided. So So here I have head four repeating, but we can select another head or heads to repeat, and it could be a head that's not even playing back, but it can feed back. We've got three different delay types which uh, change the voicing and characteristic of the delays. The drum type is based on the spinning drum or platter magnetic delays that used a uh, steel wire uh, as the recording medium. The tape type is the uh, echoes that used a quarter inch magnetic tape to uh, do the repeats. And the studio type is a cleaner uh, delay based on the type of delays that be produced on reel to reel uh, unit in the studios. All right, so let's start off with uh, drum delay type. Drum delays with multi-heads typically had a maximum delay time of somewhere around 300 milliseconds. And commonly, heads two and three might be selected. And that's where you'd get the um, atmospheric, you know, reverberant kind of effect. Of course, if we slow the delay down, we can allow for longer tempos and get more traditionally rhythmic. Now, if we go to maximum where It'll be indicative of a worn head and mechanism that is no longer able to reproduce the high end. Let's turn the repeats up there to compensate. So now the, uh, the tape echo machine type is a uh, bit of a, a cleaner signal path than the, than the drum. The EQ, the low cut and wear, is voiced a little differently, and the mechanics brings in some different elements that don't exist on a, the uh, drum type. 
uh, notably things like splices and um, tape crinkle that occur on the later half of the knob. But let's go back to uh, 12 o'clock here and uh, just hear the sound of the tape echo. <laughs> And where at minimum will create the highest bandwidth tape. Low cut will give us the most low end, so this is the widest uh, band of the uh, tape echo. Above 12 o'clock, the mechanics starts introducing, in addition to the wow and flutter, the effects of the uh, tape itself, uh, tape that's been uh, you know, crinkled or spliced or uh, been chewed up a bit. So we'll get to hear some of that as we uh, go beyond 12 o'clock. <laughs> All right, now we're going to explore the impact of the record level. And the record level control is actually influencing both an analog circuit and the uh, signal processing path as well. So we have a discrete JFET preamp that feeds the signal processor so that as we change the record level, it changes the dynamics and the, the feel of the signal that, uh, that is getting processed. <laughs> The studio delay type is the cleanest of the three. So let's, uh, let's check that out. And uh, with repeats all the way up, um, it will go into sustained, sustained self-oscillation, but um, a little more controlled than, uh, than the drum and the, uh, and the tape types. On some of the multi-head tape machines, the multiple heads weren't evenly spaced, and that creates an interesting interaction when more than one head is set to repeat. So we've included a spacing knob that will take the head spacings from even to triplet to golden ratio to silver ratio. Each head varies continuously between those settings. So there they're evenly uh, sitting on top of each other. So now you hear that starting to uh, diverge as the uh, repeats accumulate.
Now the golden ratio. We've allowed for a quick way to adjust the level of the playback heads. So if you press and hold, it will go to a half level. In the silver ratio, if you have the first two heads at lower level, in the second higher, you get almost a reverse um, type of effect because the delay taps are stacked towards the, uh, the quarter note. Each head has an individual pan that is accessed by holding the feedback button down of the head that you want to pan and then turning the time knob. Let's create a, uh, a ping pong for a tap delay. We'll go left, right, left, right, and now. So we've included a speed switch and that runs the entire machine internally at, uh, at different rates, which then has an impact on the fidelity of the repeats and um, the uh, mechanics of the system as they track the, uh, the change in speed. So there, as I switched to half speed, the contents of the delay line were shifted down an octave, and the uh, delay time is now twice as long as it used to be. So let's check out the effect that speed has on the mechanics. We're going to go to uh, tape. It'll be most dramatic there with the impact of the tape uh, splices and warbles. So um, here we are at normal speed. So we've got high mechanics there. Now at low speeds, the effect of the uh, system running slower will be uh, the mechanics will have a greater impact. And now we're going to uh, hear the spring reverb. Now we have the ability to adjust the decay of the reverb, um, a secondary parameter underneath the spring knob where we hold a few
feedback one and four down. We can adjust to a short spring here. And now a super long spring here at maximum. The echo feeds the uh, spring, so the uh, repeats, uh, each one will feed into the, the spring tank. The spring is voiced to uh, sit in nicely and uh, enhance the, uh, the echoes. Sometimes when you're playing with the spring on, you don't really notice it's there until you turn it off. Mm -hmm. 